Hello everyone and welcome to Season 6, Episode 25 of Pro Wrestling's Top 50. I'm your host Travis McNeil and today we continue our countdown of the Top 50 matches of 2021 with match number 26 on our list, which is the finals of the Tournament of Survival, which was a no-canvas 200 light tubes death match between Alex Cologne and Atticus Kogar from the GCW Tournament of Survival 666 event held on June the 5th of 2021. Uh, I love tournaments. Uh, I will basically watch any tournament that I can, spoiler-free, in full. Even some of the bad ones that I've sat through. Um, because I love the excitement of a tournament. You never know what you're going to get. Matches build upon each other. Um, it's something that I've always loved from the inception of King of the Ring uh, in 93. Uh, even before that, I loved anything tournament related. I remember the WCW television title tournament in uh, late 91 or 92 that had guys like Vinny Vegas and Rob Van Dam as Robbie V in it. Um, I loved the King of Cable tournament. I loved the WCW Arm Wrestling Challenge Tournament. I love tournaments. Um, and I love deathmatch tournaments. Um, there is something just incredibly, you know, visually impressive about seeing, you know, two wrestlers or however many wrestlers, you know, covered in broken glass and caked on blood from, you know, wrestling through an afternoon, oftentimes outdoors in the hot sun uh, before getting to the finals. I've been to Tournament of Death myself before. Um, it is quite the experience. So, you know, with CZW not really having much of a force, you know, throughout the pandemic, um, Tournament of Death, you know, at the time of this recording, no longer being a thing. Um, GCW really upped their game with Tournament, tournament of Survival, uh, really becoming the preeminent deathmatch tournament in U.S. independent wrestling. IWA itself still does King of the Deathmatch, but on, you know, a lesser you know, scene scale. Um, I talked about Tournament of Death. Uh, you know, Carnage Cup is still kind of a thing. Uh, IWA Deep South, though, uh, not a promotion that I would give any sort of money to uh, based on, on who runs it. Um, so, you know, th this is kind of the one now. It's become the mecca a little bit. And this had just such a great story going into it. Um, I love uh, this story of previous tournament winners or guys that have lost in the finals, you know, coming back in, trying to reclaim that glory or, you know, get the, the monkey off their back and, and win a tournament that they haven't before. And we had a, a great opportunity for that here with Alex Cologne um, coming in for his third consecutive tournament of survival win, trying to go for the three-peat. Um, it leads to many three-peat chants throughout the match, which is cool. Um, he wears the Chicago Bulls jersey, which I love for two reasons. One, going for the Bulls, you know, style three-peat. I'm a huge Michael Jordan Chicago Bulls fan, so super into that. Um, but also, you know, having that Bulls jersey, um, you know, playing that that tribute to Nick Gage, right? It was that Bulls jersey that he wore, you know, when he, he legally died, um, you know, at a, at a tournament of death. So kind of walking in there, you know, wearing that ominous jersey. It was quite the statement, quite the visual. Um, on You know, he came out with the late Marcus Crane as his second. You know, this was at a point when Marcus Crane was on the recovery. Uh, and, you know, we, we really thought that maybe we'd see him in the ring again someday. And unfortunately, you know, he, he passed away. So, you know, watching this match back in, in hindsight, there's that to it as well. Uh, you have the legendary sick Nick Mondo. Um, who, you know, had kind of been like dissociated with wrestling for quite some time outside of a very brief appearance at a CZW Cage of Death and outside of, you know, doing some work with John Moxley and AEW for video packages and stuff like that. Um, you know, being present, he got inducted into the Deathmatch Hall of Fame the night before and, you know, having the trophy, you know, there for, for presenting it. So it added this, you know, amazing, like historical value to this match too, and this legitimacy that, you know, one of the most influential deathmatch wrestlers of all time, you know, was taking a part in this match. Um, and across the ring from Alex Cologne, you had Atticus Kogar. And it's weird recording this video now. Uh, he had, you know, a falling out with GCW. He's no longer a part of the promotion. Um, but at the time, like, he seemed like the next hot guy for that promotion. And it's weird because, you know, I'm not a super big fan of his in-ring work. But I'm a huge fan of striking when the iron is hot. And I believe that if you're a promotion and you have somebody that the crowd is ready to, to rally behind and is basically begging you to do so, that you need to capitalize on that. And that is something that GCW, in my opinion, completely missed the boat on. 
um, coming out of the spring break show. Uh, they had, you know, Ricky Shane Page, who kind of had, you know, the this ransom, I, I guess we'll say, on or this kidnapping, I should say more so than a ransom, there's no money involved, but, uh, you know, it had kind of kidnapped the GCW title, ultimately lost it back to Nick Gage, and there was this really great opportunity, I thought at the time, to have, you know, Atticus Kogar stand up against him and the rest of 440 um, and, and turn face. They didn't go that route, um, you know, but the crowd kind of started to side with him a little bit. Um, and leading into GCW's big show at the Hammerstein Ballroom, this crowd, you know, had kind of started to, to side with Alex Kogar and be firmly behind him. And it is insane to me that he did not get the title shot against John Moxley at the Hammerstein Ballroom. He made it to the final two of a Royal Rumble style match with Homicide. I don't know, you know, all of the backstage goings on. I don't know if there were already problems in play there where ultimately GCW knew that he wouldn't be around come that show. Um, but he was the last one eliminated. It led to, and don't get me wrong, I love Homicide, but it led to a really cold match between Homicide and Moxley at the Hammerstein. Um, so it was just, it was all really bizarre choices to me. Um, but here, this guy was coming in hot. Um, and, and you have a match that could go either way. You either go with the three-peat, which is really cool and historical, or you have that get snatched out, you know, with the dastardly, you know, heel that really at that point seemed like he was going to become the new top heel of your company. Um, so it led to a super hot match, electric crowd. Um, this match is short, it's impactful, it's crazy. It's it got a great sprint feel to it, which to me, the finals of a tournament either needs to be, you know, an elongated match, really selling, you know, what these guys have went through, especially when it's a one-night tournament or two-night tournament or, you know, consecutive matches, you know, back-to-back. -back. Um, or it needs to just be a balls-to-the-walls action-packed sprint because these two guys, they know that they don't have the time left in them and the longevity left in them, that they need just to hit their biggest move and, and win that trophy. Um, and that's what they go with here. And it's so exciting and it's so good. And Atticus Kogar right out of the gates pushes that pace and jumps Alex Cologne while Nick Mondo is still in the ring, which like I loved that there. It almost seemed like maybe Mondo was going to mix it up a little bit. Uh, he didn't. Um, but Kogar is just vicious. He's like jamming a light tube into the uh, clone's throat and he, you know, immediately pulls out his signature skewers and, and drives them into his head. Um, and Alex Cologne like fires back and ends up body slamming Kogar through a, a door covered in barbed wire and light tubes at ringside that doesn't break. And then Kogar like reverses a whip into another one and then double stomps one on the clone. And it's just like, this is the opening, you know, couple minutes of the match. And it's so brutal and immediately gives you all of these big, satisfying, wild spots. And what I love about this match too is nothing really feels too contrived in it. Um, everything is, you know, just sort of off the cuff. There's not a lot of setting up these big elaborate, you know, death traps. They're all kind of there and, and ready to go. And it made the match all the better for it. Um, uh, there, there's like this huge like circle of light tubes. I don't know if they were taped to a hula hoop or whatever it was. Um, but, you know, Kogar teases using it, ends up getting just a light tube smashed over his head at ringside by Cologne. Cologne puts it over Kogar and just, like, hits a kick from both sides into these tubes. Uh, I've seen big contraptions like that not kind of work out as great as you would hope. Uh, this looked awesome, though. It was a really, really cool visual. Um, back in the ring, these guys waste no time. So, uh, this is a, a no canvas match. So basically it's just the exposed ring boards. Um, so every bump is on hardwood and it's brutal. I don't know how these guys take these bumps. Uh, but there's a point where a bunch of those boards get removed. And there's actually panes of glass set up over the metal frame of the ring. And Atticus Kogar hits an air raid crash on Alex Cologne from, you know, inside the, the ring, like on the boards, through the pane of glass, through the exposed ring frame, basically all the way through like this hole in the mat to the floor. Um, nasty, nasty bump, not even taking into account the glass. It's it's an air raid crash onto a concrete floor from a pretty high elevation. Um, it's nuts. It leads to this great visual of Kogar like pulling himself out of the rubble. Um, it has a nasty cut on Alex Cologne's arm. Um, so just crazy, crazy stuff. And again, really not that far into the match. Um, the big spots don't stop there. Uh, Clone cuts Kogar off up top and it's a Spanish fly, but holding light tubes behind Kogar's back, uh, which was awesome. 
Uh, they do two really, really hot near falls, uh, where after that Spanish fly, he goes to follow up with like a grounded super kick, and Colgar gets a really quick schoolboy for two. And when Clone kicks out, he hits his finishing move, the brain hemorrhage, which is a headlock driver, onto the the exposed boards of the of the ring uh, for another two. And like I bought that as the finish. It was out of nowhere. It's a legitimate finish. It's his finisher he wins matches with all the time. Um, but on this exposed wood, I, I thought that would have been really a really cool way for Colgar to go over. Um, but it's only a two. The crowd is completely with this match. They're buzzing along. Um, Kogar makes a mistake again of going back up top and his uh, Hurricane Rana gets cut off and Clone hits a Styles Clash off the second rope through a pane of glass onto the wooden ring boards. Uh, just madness. That only gets a two. Um, and our finishing run is, is really great as well um, where Kogar kind of like gets a, a counter exploder suplex, finds a weed whacker. Um, which, again, the Mondo tie-in, the, the finals of, of Tournament of Death 1, you know, saw Mondo take the Weed Whacker to the stomach from Wife Beater in an iconic Deathmatch visual. Um, you know, we really hadn't seen Weed Whackers used, you know, a ton in Deathmatch wrestling since then, um, especially in GCW. So to see it revitalized, we've seen it quite a bit in, you know, the past year since this match. Um, but to see that again was really cool. Uh, and he gets cologne and the really badly cut up arm. So it sends the blood spray everywhere for the visual. Um, he goes for that brain hemorrhage, that headlock driver once again. Uh, but cologne counters it, hits a big sleeper suplex onto the exposed boards, which also had thumbtacks dumped onto them. Um, hits like a pop-up kind of go to sleep to the back of the head um, and locks in this single arm uh, Sabu style camel clutch, which is Alex Cologne's finishing maneuver. Um, it seems a little weird and this big crazy death match with a bunch of different spots, uh, you know, with basically a submission or pass out finish. Uh, but that's what they did here. It worked for me. That camel clutch is over. Cologne has used that to finish so many matches over the past couple of years. Uh, you know, Kogar basically got knocked stupid with the sleeper suplex and the knee to the back of the head. So it made sense that he would pass out in that move. It gave Cologne the three-peat, which, you know, made everybody happy. Um, you know, it was a great notch in the belt of Atticus Kogar that he made it to the finals. Um, at the time of me recording this video, Tournament of Survival will be going down in the next month. Who knows what would have happened if Kogar was still around. You know, maybe it would have been his year. Um, but nevertheless, uh, this is a great match to look back on. One of the best death matches of the year. Action-packed, bloody, brutal, big spots, a big fight feel, a bunch at stake, a nod to the past with Mondo and the Weed Whacker. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's a sprint, uh, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's uh, action-packed. It's tons of fun. I, I love this match. If you're a Deathmatch fan, must see stuff if you haven't already seen it. Um, you can check it out on Fight TV and order the replay of last year's Tournament of Survival. You can subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so that you never miss a video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Wrestling50. And please join me again next time as we continue to count down Pro Wrestling's Top 50.